If you're a fan of shows like Curb Your Enthusiasm, The Office, The Inbetweeners, or Peep Show, you're probably a fan of cringe humor and moments so awkward they literally make you cringe, but sometimes cringing at a TV show isn't always the best, and it can make us cringe like we did through the entirety of Cats. Often there are times in shows where a scene is so bad that it makes us not want to live on this planet anymore. In this video, we are going to take a look at the most cringe-worthy TV moments that made us give up a show altogether so let's take a look. There will be multiple spoilers throughout, so make sure to check the chapters if you don't want a particular show ruined. What constitutes cringeworthy is just my opinion and nothing more. Riverdale, need I say more? To be honest, I could spend the entirety of this video speaking about Riverdale alone. There are many, many, many instances where Riverdale was exceptionally cringeworthy, such as Jughead going on a terribly wooden monologue that he's a weirdo. I'm weird, I'm a weirdo. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. I mean, by that logic, Cat in the Hat's a weirdo. Actually, no, that checks out. Other cringe-worthy Riverdale moments include Dark Betty slowly dancing to Mad World, and basically just Dark Betty in general, the entire cult storyline, Archie starting the Red Circle Vigilante group, like, why are they all basically shirtless, and Jughead pretending to be dead while Archie and Betty hook up. But my personal favorite has to be the moment a guy tells Archie he dropped out of fourth grade to sell drugs drugs so he could support his Nana, which is cringy enough as it is, only for Archie to tell him that you haven't known the triumphs and defeats, the epic highs and lows of high school football. What are you talking about? I guess I'll never know as I've never felt the triumphs and defeats of high school football. Game of Thrones Season 8. Again, need I say more? Now, I would argue that very few people stopped watching this show because of Season 8, but many people quickly lost faith. Season 8 had some truly cringeworthy and questionable moments, such as Grey Worm forcing Jon to be banished from Westeros and everyone for some reason just agreeing to it. Even after Grey Worm and company leave, the fact that one minute a dragon is near invincible, and then the next it's down in one hit to bigging up the Night King for eight seasons just to finish him off like that. But the most cringeworthy moment has to be when Tyrion says that Bran should be king because he has the best story. There's nothing in the world more powerful than a good story. Negating the fact that he really doesn't have the most interesting storyline, has no experience of leadership, and that everyone around him dies. Seriously, he's like one of those people who gets a huge job without any relevant experience on their CV. It would be like uh, appointing a golden retriever to the head of NASA, or turning that Dirk Man kid from the Disney Channel into a professional boxer. It makes no sense. Also, has Bran known the triumphs and defeats of high school football? Yeah, I think not. <laughs> Grey's Anatomy, yet again, need I say more? Despite a big fan base, Grey's Anatomy has had some really questionable and eye-rolling moments, such as the whole musical episode, the moment Izzy sleeps with Denny's ghost, or when they basically had a crossover with Lost and have had most of the cast get in a plane crash, you know, just to name a few. But again, my personal favorite's the moment that Christina slips and falls on the floor, only to be impaled by a giant icicle. Like, what? <laughs> Grey's Anatomy wasn't the only show to have a musical number that made our eyes roll with part three of the chilling adventures of Sabrina, including a truly cringe-inducing musical number. Seriously, it hurts. I might need to see a doctor as long as it's not one from Grey's Anatomy. That would only make it worse. It's safe to say that the musical number in Sabrina was closer to Cats on the scale than it was to Hamilton. <laughs> It is no secret that the quality of Supernatural declined over time, especially after original showrunner Eric Kripke left after the first five seasons. Many fans may have lost faith sooner than this, but for me personally, Dean's death, which like David Tennant in Doctor Who, apparently went on forever, was kind of, uh, I don't know, bad? Another somewhat cringe-worthy storyline was the moment they decided to give God a sister, only for her to spend a season trying to seduce Dean. Come on, Supernatural, you were so much better than this. When it comes to Dexter, there are very few people out there who were satisfied with the ending. And like Supernatural and Game of Thrones, while the show started out strong, it somewhat waned over time and they made some poor decisions. An example of this is when Deb finds out that her brother, Dexter, is a killer and begins to develop feelings for him. I'll tell you that I'm in love with you. <laughs> You're in love with me? Granted, they are adopted siblings, but still, this is Dexter, not Game of Thrones. Can we just stick to murders? 
Speaking of questionable, New Girl was pretty strong all throughout its run, but there was one joke that went too far. The one we're talking about is the moment it's revealed that Jess and Robbie were actually cousins and they didn't even know it. Robbie? I think we're related. It's just a gross gag and one that was not necessary. Did it make me stop watching the show? No, but it did make me question a few things. Also, honorable mention is a similar storyline in Friends, where Ross develops a crush on his cousin, although that payoff with Phoebe also crushing on her at the end of the episode was worth the discomfort. <laughs> Now, if I found out I was going to be a father, the last thing I'd do is sing a song about it in front of the woman who is pregnant and her parents, but you know, that's just me. Finn in Glee, however, oh yeah, decided it would be appropriate to sing You're Having My Baby in front of Quinn and her parents at the dinner table in a scene that's just horribly awkward. Seriously, I'm in pain watching this scene. What makes it even more uncomfortable is that he isn't even the father. Yeah. That's a solid 10 out of 10 on the cringe meter which probably in itself is cringy. <laughs> Once Upon a Time was another show that succumbed to strange decisions and cringeworthy moments as the show went on, losing a number of fans along the way. One moment was by including Frozen's Elsa and Anna basically to promote the movie, while Emma Swan becoming the Dark Queen was also a really moment, and it became apparent that the show was no longer a unique retelling of classic fairy tales. <laughs> Like Once Upon a Time, True Blood also had a reveal that felt like a step too far, and that was the reveal that Suki was actually a fairy. I'm a fairy? It's a classic case of jumping the shark, unfortunately not literally, although I would not have ruled that out, and it felt like the show had run out of ideas. Another example of this is Panthers. Like, seriously, Panthers? They sound like one of Brian Fantana's colognes in Anchorman. <laughs> Like Grey's Anatomy, ER was another medical-based show that decided to up the craziness of their accidents as time went by. Case in point, Dr. Romano in the helicopter. Dr. Romano found himself losing his arm after it was cut off by a helicopter, only to be crushed and killed by a helicopter one year later in what I assume was an attempt at dramatic irony? Seriously, it's like a non-smart version of Buster and his hand in Arrested Development. That was comedy gold. <laughs> Now I'm not gonna lie to you here because I can't watch every single show on the planet, I have not seen Pretty Little Liars, but I have been consistently told that the scene with Toby and Juvie is a notoriously cringe-worthy scene, and after watching it, admittedly without any context, I'd have to agree. She's still combing her hair with an electric toothbrush. The thing is though, it kinda made me want to watch the show, mainly because I have so many questions about that outfit that he's wearing. Like seriously, he looks like a value brand Zorro. <laughs> Sherlock is a show known for its strong and, for the most part, consistent writing, although I would argue that season 4 of the BBC series was a notable decline in quality. While it wasn't enough to say that it was jumping the shark, or even enough to turn viewers off of watching, giving Sherlock an evil sister who was the mastermind of everything was such an eye-rolling trope and didn't really fit in the contemporary take this show was going for. <laughs> Although it isn't quite up there with the triumphs and defeats of high school football, Vampire Diaries is another that, in an attempt to provide a moment of poetry, ended up giving a clunky and awkward line that unfortunately falls in the cringeworthy category. As Stefan talks about life's final moments, he says the line, Life isn't about your final moments. It's about the moments that led up to them. That line was so cheesy, I think I'm lactose intolerant now. Did I just make a cringeworthy dad joke? <laughs> Rick Castle found himself doing a job he was not qualified for when he deactivated a nuclear bomb on the show Castle. Seeing as the guy is a writer, it is a touch on the ridiculous side, and therefore can be seen as a case of jumping the shark that Castle needed to solve. <laughs> When it comes to zinger lines, Cookie has her fair share of good ones in Empire, but not every line is a hit. Take for example, her line about sidewalks when she says, The streets ain't made for everybody, that's why they made sidewalks. Like it was meant to be a sick burn, but it doesn't really make any sense. Is it enough to stop watching the show? No, but it's still an awkward line. <laughs> 13 Reasons Why is another example of a show that went downhill fast. Take, for example, Clay, who went from a sympathetic character to just plain bizarre. A prime example of this is the moment when Clay, um, let's say defecates himself in order to escape the hospital and have the nurse remove his restraints. Honestly, I can't think of one reason why he would do that, never mind 13. There are other questionable moments in the show, such as Justin's random death and the moment Tyler is horrifically attacked. <laughs> 
like Riverdale, there are plenty of eyebrow arching moments in Gossip Girl. I mean, and get ready for it, this is a major, major, major spoiler! Take the reveal that Dan is Gossip Girl, for example, or basically everything Serena does. But it's hard to say when exactly the show lost its audience. A scene that is a contender is the moment Dan, Vanessa, and Hilary Duff's Olivia have one of the most awkward threesomes ever to happen on television. Yeah, it's a scene that's uncomfortable for everyone. Seriously, that is Lizzie McGuire. I was not mentally prepared for that. Seeing as Jane the Virgin is based on a telenovela and was trying to stay true to its roots, it's not surprising that they have some pretty outlandish plot points, but as the show went on, they made some decisions that were just a little too far. In particular, their handling of Michael. After breaking audiences into factions, Team Raphael and Team Michael, they broke Jane and Michael up, got them back together, had Michael nearly die after being shot, then had him die from a medical condition related to that shooting, only then have it be a fake out, ah, surprise! and show that he had been alive all along and he's working on a ranch. It's uh, a little too much, seeing as there was seemingly no reason they brought him back and it undercut Jane's grieving arc and the publishing of her novel. Like Jane the Virgin, Ugly Betty is another show based on a telenovela, and another who made questionable decisions as the show began to wind down. Namely, the moment that Daniel decides to join a death cult to get over the passing of his wife, it was pretty pointless and basically amounted to nothing. Besides, everyone knows that the best way to get over the passing of a loved one is engaging in high school football, because nothing compares to the triumphs and defeats and the epic highs and lows of the sport. Gilmore Girls is another beloved show with, for the most part, consistently strong writing. But there was one aspect of the show that irked fans, and that's the character arc of Rory. Rory began as a sweet, innocent teen, but as time goes on, makes some extremely frustrating decisions that didn't sit right with fans, such as sleeping with Dean even though he was married at the time, cutting off communication with Lorelai and going off to live in her grandparents' pool house, dropping out of Yale after stealing a boat, and one more Word, Logan. I do not like you, Logan. Not one bit. One example that proved Rory was no longer the character fans loved was the moment that she fat shamed a dancer for the Yale newspaper. Your review was mean and petty and despicable. It was exceptionally out of character and frustrated fans to no end. When it comes to scandal, I am yet to find one fan who thought the plotline of Olivia being kidnapped was a good idea. In fact, the storyline came so far out of left field that there were a number of fans who straight up stopped watching the show, and the storyline as a whole was just so ridiculous it quickly led people to changing the channel, or closing the tab or whatever. When it comes to giving moral lessons, Bones decided to go all in, forcefully spoon feeding us a number of painfully cheesy moments in order to prove a point. The most cringeworthy moment that comes to mind is the moment that Brennan understands the meaning of Christmas after giving birth in a stable. Just like a white mouse named Stuart sitting on your face, it's a little on the nose. <laughs> Now, while there are people that liked the ending of How I Met Your Mother, I was not one of them. And the painfully dragged out final season was nearly enough for me to stop watching altogether. The payoff of the mother and Ted meeting was worth it, but they immediately ruined it by killing her off and having the kids convince Ted that This is a story about how you're totally in love with Aunt Robin. Which is a cringy sentence in itself. I mean, this is despite using the entire final season to focus on Barney and Robin's wedding. Yes, the ending had been pre-recorded, but still, in my opinion, the alternate version was so much better. Admittedly, the scene with Barney and his daughter was sweet, but no, that scene with Ted and his kids, yeah, that was cringy. <laughs> And finally, I'm gonna end with a controversial one, and that's Big Bang Theory. Now, this is important. I am not a fan of the show, and while I might be in the minority, I thought it ran dry after season one, and the jokes, or lack thereof, were darn cringy. Particularly anything involving Howard before he meets Bernadette, as he is almost irredeemably creepy. For me, the whole storyline with Howard and Raj pretending to be goths was the epitome of sitcom cringe, although Sheldon and Amy's relationship is also up there, as that literally did stop me watching the show. As I said, an unpopular opinion, and I know I've stepped on some toes there, but hey, I thought I'd end this video on a big bang, huh? See what I did there? Okay, I'll see myself out.
Let's end on a piece of sacrilege, shall we? Breaking Bad is a near-perfect show, but the scene where Skyler sings Happy Birthday, Mr. President to Ted was horrifically awkward and cringy. Seriously, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry or both. See ya.